Okay, look at this, guys. Abraham, in his writings and scrolls, uh, was he or somebody that drew pictures of Egypt when he was there. Look at this. This is a picture drawn to describe them trying to kill Abraham in Egypt. And Joseph Smith interpreted this picture with the Holy Ghost. This is, Ab this is Abraham, and there's some people trying to sacrifice him, kill him. The translation of the Bible is revealed to Joseph Smith in Prophet 1831 and chapter 24. But it's not very long. It's only two pages. Huh, okay. I didn't know that. So then, Caden, Caden. Uh, in Joseph Smith Matthew, Joseph corrected part of the Bible. The fourth part of the Pearl of Great Price is the Articles of Faith. Try the 16th article of faith. How many articles are there? Okay. What's your favorite article of faith? None of the above. What? None of the above. Okay, it's H2. Look at that. So this is where the kids, kids can ride their bikes on this street. Well, there's a big hill at the end there. Daddy, you said it's in a hybrid movement. Well, there's still plenty of time to meet all the neighbors. Here? 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 Here?
to change I'd that like, sign right there to say the Brinkmans. I'd like to take, uh, you know, to take the sign with it. Daddy, no, you're not going to play the ground, Dad. I'd like to take a, Daddy, I'd like to take a picture with the other Daddy. camera. Daddy, I'd like to take a picture with the other camera. So you got the idea? Yes. No! Eventually. No. No, white. Yellow. I want a house. I want white. You know what? You guys are just. You guys are gonna grow up and move away before we know it. Good. This is Deer Creek. It runs through Nevada City and then down past it. This is the trail where Dane likes to go biking down along this area. And there's several waterfalls on this creek. The trail down there. And Grandma and Dale down. Grandma and Dane. <laughs> and they're Dane's two oldest children, Jessalyn and Caden, are down there among all of this foliage and river. I'm sure the kids will come back wet. One in the house, three more to go. Hello. Mom said she'll bring up the rear. Literally. Did you take her dirty pants? Did you take her pants? Did you take her pants? Some cadence. A little bit more interactive nature than my nail. Let's take a picture. Of my nail. Of my nail. Of my nail. Yeah. yeah. No. Probably won't even show it. It won't show up, but yeah, it's grandma my nail got okay. broke. She did a... She scared me. <laughs> she flipped off a rock and went it whole hog into the... into the creek. What about sitting in this car? She picked up a lot of mud. Hmm? Maybe you should give me your shirt to sit on. <laughs> you sit on my oh, shirt. Is your car oh, and your thick. butt wet? Oh yeah. 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 Wet and dirty. Well actually I tried to wash off. 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 No, I don't have any. Might be tomorrow. Get in. Come on. Oh, can we go to the car, Kaylin? It's a rental car. Can we get in the car? Can you clean the car? She has a nice black and blue place tomorrow. Grandma? You have a nice contusion. Grandma? What? Um, I'll take it you guys to all these risky places. You might want to clean the car when you get home. You argumentative. Sustained. Watch yourself, counselor. Did you report trying to value your spirits? I remember thinking very highly of Private Bell, and I wanted to see his record tarnished by a formal charge. You prefer to be handled to the woman. Yes, I most certainly did. Lieutenant, do you know what a code red is? Yes, I do. Have you ever ordered a code red? No, I have not. Lieutenant, did you order Dawson and two other men to make sure that Private Bell received no food, 
or drink except water for a period of seven days? That is a distortion of the truth, Lieutenant. Private Bell was placed on barracks restriction. He was given water and vitamin supplements, and I can assure you, at no time was his health in danger. Sure, it's lovely to Private Bell. But you did order the barracks restriction, didn't you? You did order denial of food. Yes, I did. Wouldn't this form of discipline be considered a code red? No. If I called the other 478 Marines at Guantanamo Bay to testify, would they consider it a code red? Please, the court, the witness can't possibly testify to what 478 other men would say. Now, we object. This entire line of questioning is argumentative and irrelevant badgering of the witness. The government's objection is sustained, Lieutenant Cappy, and I would remind you that you're now questioning a Marine officer with an impeccable service record. Thank you, Your Honor. Lieutenant Kendrick goes to Austin given a rating of below average on this last report because you learned he'd been sneaking food to Private Bell. Object! Not so fast. Lieutenant? Lance Corporal Dawson was given a below average rating because he had committed a crime. Crime? What crime did he commit? Lieutenant Kendrick? Dawson brought a hungry guy some food. What crime did he commit? He disobeyed an order. And because he did, because he exercised his own set of values, because he made a decision about the welfare of a Marine that was in conflict with an order of yours, he was punished. Is that right? Lance Corporal Dawson disobeyed an order. Yeah. It wasn't a real order, was it? After all, it's peacetime. He wasn't being asked to secure a hill or advance on a beachhead. I mean, surely a Marine of Dawson's intelligence can be trusted to determine on his own which are the really important orders and which orders might, say, be morally questionable. Lieutenant Ken? Ken? Can Dawson determine on his own which orders he's going to follow? No, he cannot. The lesson he learned after the Curtis Belt is going to my right. I would think so. You know, so don't you, Lieutenant? Object! Sustained. Lieutenant Ken, if one on the question. If you had ordered Dawson to give Santiago a code red... I specifically ordered those men to be out to say to me, I'll tell Bage you again? Lieutenant, don't answer that. Here I have to answer. Lieutenant Kendrick, did you order Lance Corporal Dawson and Private Downey to give Willie Santiago a code red? <laughs> Lieutenant Kendrick, did no, you... No, I did not. Thank you. What's the word? Well, I got the power chief's log from that night, just to tell him the truth. 6 a.m. flight with the first plane out. Let me see this. Won't be late tonight, Lieutenant. Oh, yeah. What the hell are you trying to pull? The first flight stateside left Guantanamo Bay at 2300 and arrived at Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland, at a few minutes past two in the morning. Then why isn't it respect how it keeps long? Jessica. What are you telling me? You fix the long look? Well, maybe you can make it so a plane didn't take off, but I can sure as hell prove that one landed probably the long book from Andrews. You're not going to find anything in the Andrews logbook either. So you can make an entire flight disappear? Nathan Jess is about to be appointed director of operations for the National Security Council. You don't get to that position without knowing how to sidestep a few landmines. But he's not going to be able to sidestep me off. You don't still intend to put me on the stand? Thursday morning, 10 o'clock. There's got to be someone who can testify to the flight. A ground crew member, someone. Carol, this isn't TWA. There isn't a regular flight schedule. You have any idea how many planes take off and land every day? A kid from the ground crew isn't going to remember a flight that landed four weeks ago. Well, how do you know, though? You don't go and Forget the it. flight. Forget the flight. Well, the mark is in on the stand, and we'll deal with Jesse's refusal to transfer Santiago, and he'll testify to the Ford's transfer, and that'll be enough. That and Downey's testimony really ought to be enough. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dr. Downing, how would you go to Santiago if you're woman out of six? To give Brother Santiago a code red, man. And why did you give him a code red? I was ordered to give him a code red by the platoon commander of Rifle Security Company, William Ward, Lieutenant Jonathan James Kendrick. You're going to do fine. You think they'll let us go back to our platoon soon, ma'am? Absolutely. You remember the order of the questions? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. And we use small words. Yes. So can you get to right when he doesn't understand you? Joe. I'm just saying, go slow. I'm going to go slow. Okay. All right. And get him off as fast as you can. Joanne. What? It's going to be fine. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Santiago, I was William's executive officer. I knew your son vaguely, which is to say I knew his name. In a matter of time, the trial of the two men charged with your son's death will be concluded, and seven men and two women whom you've never met will try to offer you an explanation as to why William is dead. For my part, I've done as much as I can to bring the truth to light. And the truth is this. Your son is dead for only one reason. I wasn't strong enough to stop it. Always, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Andrew Martinson, United States Marine Corps. Brian, I want you to tell us one last time. Why did you go to Private Santiago's room on the night of September 6th? A code red was ordered by my platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan James Kendrick. Thank you. Your witness. Robert, the week of 2 September, the switch log has you down at post.